Hey guys, um, today we're just going to practice some more trig identities because I think seeing more examples helps with these since each one is so different. Um, so just a reminder from last time, these are the different identities that we are going to be using. If you haven't yet, pause the video and you'll want to write these down. Normally at school I would give you guys this, but since we can't see each other, you're going to have to take your own notes. So. Um, these are the tangent and cotangent ones, and then we have cosecant, secant. Again, I don't like this version of cotangent, so I would just cross this one out. And then these are the Pythagorean identities. Um, so you'll want to write those down and have them. So pause the video if you haven't yet and hurry and write those down. But again, when we are looking at identities, you are not solving for x um, like we would solve equations. We are trying to prove that one side can turn into the other side. So you're going to pick either the left side or the right side to work on. You never work on both, just one at a time. Um, and so that's the first step is just to pick a side to start with. I usually pick the more complicated looking side. So like on this example, I'd probably pick this left side to work on and try and turn this left side into that right hand side. And then um, once I pick a side, Usually my kind of train of thought or my first step that I do is I turn anything that isn't a sine or cosine into its sine or cosine version. So like secant is the same as one over cosine, so I could change it into that. And tangent is the same as sine over cosine, so I would change it into that um, and then go from there. And usually with these, you'll notice that they just kind of start to fall into place. So just kind of get going even if you're kind of confused or lost just start working through it and um, you'll see it kind of just starts to fall into place and you'll eventually get to the the right answer so um again on this one we know secant is the same as one over cosine so i'm going to change it to that and then tangent is the same as sine over cosine I'm trying to remember to put my x's on and then I would just keep the sign here because it's already a sine version. And then you would simplify. So again, we're trying to turn this side into this. We want to turn it into one over secant. So if I put this over a one, we can times these two fractions together. So I get sine times sine, which is sine squared over cosine. And then I have this one minus cosine in the front. And then, uh, lucky for us, these are already a common denominator, so we can actually just go ahead and combine these fractions. So I have 1 minus sine squared on the top over cosine. And then, again, a hint. Whenever you see a square, that's usually a pretty good sign that you will be using one of your Pythagorean identities. So here we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Um, this is the most common one, so I put the little star here. So we use this one quite a bit. With these identities, you can also rearrange them. So like right here, I have one minus sine squared. That's what I'm looking for. But if I take this formula right here and I subtract the sine squared over, I would get cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So that's if I minus the sine from each side, um, the sine squared. And then you could also do it the other way as well. I could minus the cosine squared over so that I'd have sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared. So that's fair game as well. You can rearrange these. Same with these two identities. I could um, like move the tangent squared over or move the secant squared over so you can use those same kind of methods that you would otherwise so when I see this that's going to be one of our Pythagorean identities 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared hoping we're doing x not theta but then it's over a cosine so cosine squared divided by cosine one of those cosines cancels right so I'm just left with cosine of x, but we want to turn it into 1 over secant. But remember, cosine and secant are reciprocals of each other, 
So cosine of x is the same as 1 over secant, or vice versa, secant is the same as 1 over cosine. And so we got to where we needed to, and we proved the identity. So we're good. Maybe we'll try another one. And on this one, again, I usually try to pick the more complicated version or side. This one looks kind of messy. You've got that lovely fra uh, fraction. So what I would do is probably pick this side. And if you look at the right side, we have two terms over here. Right now, this is only one term in one fraction. So what I would do is first split these fractions up so that I have one over sine plus cosine over sine. And then we have our right side. So again, we're trying to turn it into cosecant plus cotangent. But then if I look at one over sine, that is the same as cosecant. And cosine over sine is the same as cotangent. So we actually already have it. We have cosecant um, plus cotangent. So we're just showing that that left side is the same as that right side. And we're good. So that one was actually a pretty easy one. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, so on this one, this is definitely the messier looking side. So we're gonna take this left side and try and get it to turn into sine squared. So when you have these kind of messy looking fractions, um, still approach them the same. Um, I try to turn, again, things into sines and cosines where I can. So secant, I would switch into one over cosine. And then we have the sign still, we'll just keep the sign. So there's the numerator, and then tangent and cotangent. Um, on this one, we'd probably want to switch it into its sine and cosine version. So tangent is sine over cosine, and then cotangent's the opposite, they're reciprocal, so cosine's on the top over sine. Okay. So this one's definitely gonna be one that gets messier before it gets better, so. Um, here, if we times this top together, think of this as being over a one, we get sine over cosine. So there's that top now. But then on this one, we have two fractions that don't have a common denominator. So we'll probably want to get that common denominator because whenever we have a fraction divided by a fraction, we want to probably do keep, switch, flip so that we can get rid of that ugly double fraction. But right now, when you have two terms in the bottom, you can't just do the keep, switch, flip and times by the reciprocal. We have to have one term in the denominator in order to do that little trick. Right now we have two terms. So if we can get that common denominator and combine these, then we can do keep it, switch it, flip it. So this one has a cosine in the bottom, this one has a sine. So we're gonna have to times them by each other. So I'm gonna times this one by sine over sine and this one by cosine over cosine. So it's gonna get kind of messy before it gets better. But here on this fraction on the top, I get sine times sine is sine squared. And then on the bottom, you get that lovely sine cosine and then on this one we're going to get cosine times cosine is cosine squared and then sine times cosine but now we have that common denominator so on this one also on the top sine over cosine is the same as tangent let's just turn it into that tangent now just so we don't have to write quite as much and then here we can combine these into a common fraction. So we're gonna have sine squared plus cosine squared all over sine times cosine. But again, whenever you see those square terms, it's probably a pretty good sign that you have one of your identities. So that again is going to be this Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So I can just turn that top into a one which is much better. And then we have the tangent here on the top. So now that we have just one term in the denominator here, I can do the keep, switch, flip. So I'm gonna keep the tangent. Actually, 
Maybe we don't want to write it as tangent. Let's keep this as the sine over cosine. Because you'll see why in a second, why we want to keep it as sine over cosine. Because if I keep this as sine over cosine, and then I change it to a multiply, and then I flip this upside down to times by the reciprocal, we get sine cosine on the top over one. This cosine cancels with that cosine. So that's why we want to keep it in this for, uh, format instead of the tangent format. And then we just get sine times sine, which is sine squared over one, but that doesn't really matter. And so we just showed that it equals sine squared. So that one's definitely a messier one when you have these lovely fractions that you have to work with. But just kind of remember when you have these fractions, especially when they get messy like this, when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can't do the keep switch flip trick if these are if there's two terms on the denominator. You need to combine those and get them into one term. And then once you have one term, you can do keep switch flip. So keep the top one times it by the reciprocal and then it will work. So that is one kind of method that you can do. Let's do another one. Probably have time for one more before I have to stop the video, but Okay, so on this one, we have secant over cosine minus tangent over cotangent. It's definitely the trickier side compared to the one. So on this one, what I would do is switch your secant. We know secant is one over cosine over cosine. And then tangent, I would switch into sine over cosine and then cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay. But then on this one, when you have a fraction just divided by one thing, it's actually the same as if you just times those together. So one over cosine divided by cosine is the same as one over cosine squared. So we can just combine that into one over cosine squared. And then here we have one fraction divided by one fraction. So you can do the keep switch flip. So if I, let me do that kind of off to the side, I'm gonna keep the sine over cosine, but then times it by the reciprocal, which means sine is going to go to the top and cosine goes to the bottom. So we end up getting sine times sine, which is sine squared, and then cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And then lucky for us, we have that common denominator. So we don't need to do anything to get a new denominator. We can just go ahead and subtract those fractions. So on the top, I get one minus sine squared over cosine squared. But again, whenever you see those squares, probably a good sign that you have your Pythagorean identity. But instead of using this version, it's the one where we subtract the sine squared over. So one minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. So we get cosine squared on the top over cosine squared on the bottom, but anything divided by itself just equals one. So we just showed that one equals one. So there's another one. Hopefully seeing some more of those helps. Um, I can do more examples with you guys if you would like them. But again, each of these is so different. They just kind of take work. So if you get frustrated with them, that's totally normal. Uh, but you'll, the more you do, the more you'll kind of get into a flow um, and kind of start to see patterns that show up. But if you haven't yet, again, make sure you have these identities written down somewhere so that you can work through them that way. But let me know if you guys have any questions or if you want to see any more examples and I can do some more videos for you. Hope you're doing well. Have a good day.